is it recording? Yes? Good? Okay. Hey friends. So today's video is actually coming a little bit sooner than I expected it to because I got a ton of stuff in the mail recently that I was very pleased to get as quickly as I did. Um, so today we're going to actually be playing with a handful of black owned makeup brands that I've been interested in trying, ones that I've had for a while now. Jackie Ina made a, she called it a challenge, I guess, back in the day a couple years ago called the Bomb Black Owned Makeup Brand Challenge. And I bought some things last week that that I wanted to try out and kind of spotlight some brands that I've been a huge fan of for a while. Just put them all on my face. <laughs> Links to Black Lives Matter resources down in the description below, as well as some bail funds and just local things, things that you should look out for in your specific area. And as well, there will be the petition and uh, ways that you can help out Breonna Taylor's family and ways to help get the uh, police officer who murdered her be charged and put in jail. All of that will be in the description down below. But we're gonna talk about makeup for the rest of the video. And I already put on some things on my face. I do wanna give a disclaimer, I guess. Because I have super, super sensitive skin, like my hands have been breaking out in eczema with how much I've had to wash my hands. Uh, my skin is very sensitive. So I didn't wanna buy anything that I didn't know if it was gonna work for me because then I didn't wanna have something sitting around not being used. And I didn't want to have to return something because returned product equals no, like just wasted product. I bought things that I wanted to try and that I knew that I was going to be super into and I was going to be stoked about because I think it's like important for us to kind of open our eyes and, and look at some new brands and uh, support some new brands and some black owned brands that maybe you didn't know about. But I also think it's important not to just do that. You know, while I have talked about many, many times supporting independent brands takes some of the power away from the people at the top, same thing goes. Supporting black owned brands takes away some of the power and it spreads the wealth to more people. And it takes some of that power away from all the brands that are owned by like white men. So, you know. Because everything right now is pretty much closed up. You can't go sample things in store. I was only buying things that I knew, like I said, I knew was gonna work, that I didn't have to like sample it in a store. I just think it was something to be noted that that a lot of these brands don't have a, a storefront presence. And the more we lift them up and the more we support them and the more we buy from them, obviously what you can do, which is also why I didn't just like go ham. Cause I was like, my money could be better used in local situations. Cause <laughs> Seattle right now is, Ooh, <laughs> let me actually start putting makeup on my face before I talk more about Seattle. Cause I do want to talk a little bit about the Chaz, the Capitol Hill autonomous zone, because I've seen a lot of misinformation being spread online that I wanted to clear some stuff up, but we're going to be using the colored rain vivid pigments and shadows palette. That is this guy right here. I bought this. I have had a uh, colored rain liquid lipstick for a couple years, but I had been wanting to try this for a while. So great customer service and everything came relatively quickly. This palette is pretty much all brights. There's some like pastels. Um, there is one kind of brown transition shade I'm assuming is like, like a medium mid-tone brown. I don't wanna swatch a ton because I don't wanna wash my hands that much because my hands are hurting. So I don't know what kind of look we're gonna do today. You know, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna play with some stuff. Um, it's got a nice big mirror, so that's really cool. I don't know if I wanna do a two-tone look because there's really only one pink in here. Maybe we'll do like a purple and blue. That could be kind of fun because there's some really nice, just like parallel tones of the purples and blues in here. I think that's what I'll do. I was like, what do I want to do? I want to do a two-tone look because then I can use more eyeshadows. Um, I already primed my eyes, by the way. I really like this pastel purple shade particularly. It's very pretty. Very pretty. Yeah, this came super, super quickly in the mail. So I was very excited. Libby's been waiting for like a uh, hot pad from sending in some box tops. And she's, she's like, you got three packages before I even get my hot pad. She's been very anxious about her hot pad. Deeper purple. It's just gonna kind of be all purple on this eye. So if you guys have been seeing any of the stuff coming out about the Chaz, the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone, the Chaz, if you guys haven't heard about it, it is, uh, what is it, six, 10, 10 city blocks in the Capitol Hill neighborhood, which is where the majority of the Seattle protests were taking place. And which is also where the Seattle police 
were tear gassing people. After they semi abandoned the precinct, the Seattle police abandoned the East Precinct, which is like right in that neighborhood. They boarded it up, they took all their things and they kind of just like left, which for like a minute, everybody was like, is this a trap? Because that's how fucked up the Seattle PD is. When you're any moment of peace, you're like, this is a trap. So they abandoned the precinct. The protesters pretty much were like, okay, well, this is our zone now. This is free Seattle. And they pretty much just put up like a perimeter, not like barricades. People have been saying there's like armed guards at barricades. That's not the case at all. Like it, it's literally speakers and free food and medic tents. And like they're working on a mental health tent. They're literally, it is radical in the best way possible. Yeah, there's been a lot of people who have been live streaming. I have not been myself. I will say I have not been, but I have n dozens of friends that have and people who have been live streaming occasionally and people who've been getting video and photos. There was this big, beautiful mural installation all across, uh, East Pike and it was just it literally like there's all these wonderful drone shots where it just says Black Lives Matter across the road and each letter was painted and designed by a local black artist and it's super super cool but I will leave links to things in the description if you're curious about finding out what has been going on because there's a lot of misinformation out there so much misinformation um, and I am one of the last people to say fake news but fake news. I'm taking the darker purple, which is Perp Smurf. Oh, I love that name. The other ones were cute and vibes. Oh, these are really cute names. I like these a lot. All right. What? That's what's been going down in the Chaz. Uh, <laughs> it's nowhere near the way the president is making it sound. It's nowhere near the way Fox News is making it sound. The New York Times actually did like a decent job at explaining what it was. But if you really wanna know what's been happening, just follow the activists that have been there and like been actually a part of it because they're showing what's actually happening. Like they've had movie nights, literally movie nights, <laughs> like on the side of walls and on the side of buildings. And they've had speakers throughout the day they have like a community garden that they're working on right now. They're looking for gardening supplies. It's just really, really cool to see because after last weekend was like an absolute, just what the fuck was happening there. It's cool to see that this is where they've gotten and by no means is it the end of the road because there's still so much to do. But for the people who were fighting so hard last week to see just this level of like, peace for now, I can imagine is just refreshing and reinvigorating and inspiring. So now I'm gonna take the blue shades. Oh, and one other thing before I go on even more about makeup. Um, one thing that the Chaz has been doing a part of their demands and part of their action plan is to um, return some of the ownership of the land to the Duwamish tribe. Because if you didn't know, Seattle is named after a Duwamish chief part of the Chaz's goal and part of their action plan is to um, return some of the power back to the Duwamish and return some of the land back to the Duwamish because Seattle is just like all stolen land. So I think they've done a decent job at having a sensitivity to that while saying that like, this is now like free Seattle, but it also belongs to the Duwamish. Anyway. Um, enough talking about Seattle. So this blue, this is a very pretty, like almost periwinkle. It's not quite as purple as the periwinkle that I have in my Lethal Cosmetics palette, but still like, like a sky blue. That's a very blendable blue. Nice job, color grain. Now I'm gonna take, I wanna do this brighter blue up here. All right. I don't think I've done this color combo for a two-tone look yet. No, I think I did green and blue, but not purple and blue. Now I'm gonna take the darker blue, which is Yacht Life. This one's dark, so I don't wanna put too much on there. This you could almost use as a liner as well, which I really like. I like that they have like the gradients of like the color specifically, because I actually had wanted to buy this a while back, but because I still had the electric palette and I was like, I don't need another rainbow palette, but then I decluttered the electric palette. So I'm happy that I have it now because um, I have other brights palettes for sure, but probably the closest as far as like color spectrum 
I would have would be the Flower Bomb from Midas. Seriously, it's indie brands that are putting out fucking colorful palettes. <laughs> I swear, when I see people be like, oh, look at this brand, they need to come out with more colorful palettes. It's like, just buy from indie brands. Like, it's not art. Like, <laughs> all right. I think that might be good on the shadow on the top. I don't want to do the bottom yet. Oh, my foot is asleep. Jesus. Three hours later. What was I saying? I don't remember what I was saying. Because I'm going to do a liner with this multi-chrome eyeshadow from JD Glow. And these are the galaxy shadows, by the way. I have used this one in a recent video. I've used all, of, I love these. I love these so much. The galaxy shadows are fantastic. They are huge, but this one is a really good highlight. This is opal. Like, gosh. Oh my God. Oh, it's so pretty. But yeah, no, I love JD Glow shadows and I bought one of their multi-chromes. Yeah, so let's, do this. I actually have, I have like an old like mixing medium that I'm just going to use to make this into a liner. So I gotta get some of the product out of it to mix with my mixing medium. Um, this shade is called Um, <laughs> which I love. Uh, yeah. So now I'm taking it on a liner brush or a angled brush. And this is a multi-chrome that's mostly from blue to green to purple. So it's perfect. So that's what that looks like on the back of my hand. So we're gonna do a little liner. I didn't do concealer yet for this reason because I knew that this would have some sort of fallout probably. They also have um, liquid versions of this as well as loose pigments. They don't just have the um, pressed. So if you are somebody who prefers loose pigments to pressed pigments, they have that as well. Oh, this looks really good on the blue. I like it on the purple, but I like it on the blue a lot more. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to clean that up with my concealer. This angled brush is just not very good for like super crisp lines because I don't often do liner like this, you know? All right, so there is the liner, the multi-chrome liner. That is super fun. I like that. I like that a lot. Next, um, I got a concealer from Oma Beauty and I actually got a shade that was like slightly too dark for me. I didn't realize it was slightly too dark until I got it in the mail. So like for reference, this is my normal concealer. This is the Oma Beauty. I'll see how it looks under my eyes. Um, it's really, really good for like blemishes because it's very, very close to my skin tone. This one's just a bit more brightening. So, but the times that I have tried it today and yesterday, I think the finish is really, really nice. The actual like texture and the formula is quite good. So I will definitely get a different shade. The coverage and the tone is really, really good. It's like a nice neutral tone. This is in the shade T1. I probably could have gone with T.75. So yeah, so this is the Woke Concealer. I love the branding and the packaging, but Oma also has foundation and they have brow stuff, mascara, eyeshadow. They have all kinds of stuff and it has a really big applicator, which I am a huge fan of. All of my favorite concealers have had this big chunky applicator. So as you can see, it's very close to my actual skin tone. And actually the owner of Oma Beauty, Sharon, is the person that started the pull up for change uh, movement where brands basically just like disclose their executive kind of board and, and disclose how many people who work for them are actually black and like what the ratio is. But actually uh, Amanda just did a fantastic video that she posted today, the day that I'm filming this, um, about brands performative allyship. You should definitely go watch her video. And and everything that she says is just like spot on, holy shit. Yeah, go watch her video. But yeah, so Sharon, the founder of Oma Beauty started that. I'm really curious about their brow things because they've got some brow stuff that looks pretty cool. I believe they're most known for their complexion products though, which is why I went for a concealer because I was like, I wanted to try some complexion products and I knew that concealer, I tend to be a little bit more for, like my skin is more forgiving with. So let's see how this blends in. <laughs> yeah, it's very, very creamy. It's like a very creamy texture. Um, it's very good for my nose, I will say, because it is like, 
the color of my skin, this particular shade. So it's very good for my nose without like highlighting it because I use the same concealer like all over my face. But for under my nose, it's really good because it doesn't emphasize anything because it's just a little bit darker. Okay, that's not too bad at all. I'm gonna do my powder and my contour off camera because I just got some more powder. I was gifted some stuff from a friend of mine and I have way too much of that already. So I'm like, I don't need to get new powder yet. So now I'm gonna finish my lower lash line. This blue, drip drop, drip drop. Oh yeah, this is blue. Yes. I think what I wanna do for highlight on the inner corner, I think I wanna do um, Opal from JD Glow. One of their galaxy shadows. Look at this. Look at, look at that. Oh, this fucking shade is so pretty and so reflective. Oh my God. So I just did my liner and my mascara off camera because I did not have new liner and mascara, but I do have a blush and highlighter selection. And this is the, I believe it's pronounced Scoop Silize from Beauty Bakery. I believe that's what that means. I really hope I'm correct. And it's one of their highlighter and blush quads. And they've got um, four shades. This one's like kind of like a blush top highlighter thing. Uh, French tart, pink truffle, creme brulee, and beignet. So I think what I want to do is just start with creme brulee because I want to use both of these shades, but I want to like build up to the pink truffle. Ooh, this is a nice like natural kind of like glowy blush, but they do have like multiple quads of blushes. This is just the lighter one. I like this. I'm gonna take a little bit of pink truffle, just like, that's a, that's an intense blush. Yeah, that's intense, but that's a really pretty tone. I like that, but it does sheer out and blend out and not get too intense. Add more, add more, Eddie. I like this, this is fun. This is right up my alley. Ooh, that's a nice little glow. I like that. And then for highlight, I will obviously be taking Beignet from this palette as well. Very pigmented highlight. It's like a white gold. It's not like super, super sparkly. It's more just like glowy and satiny. It looks really intense when you swatch it, but on the face, it's like actually a lot more wearable than I expected it to be. So that's fun. I like that. Now for lips. I'm gonna do a little bit of my Colored Rain liquid lip in Mars and like kind of blend it out on my lips to give a bit more pigmentation because I really like this shade. Ooh. I like the formula for this one because it's like easy to blend out and not have like the driest butthole lips. Um, and because I'm not the biggest fan of the way that liquid lipstick always looks, I have a lip gloss from Mented Cosmetics. And this is a brand that their kind of thing is that they have nude things for all skin tones. So they have lipsticks, lip gloss, uh, nail polish as well. So this is in the shade Coralition. So it's like a corally toned gloss. I will say this is like, here, I'll show you. And this gloss is not like the like most wet looking lip gloss, but it's almost like a lip cream, but it's it feels like a lip balm. Like when I put this on without having a lipstick underneath, it has some pigment to it, but without being like so pigmented to where like it like bleeds into your lip lines and then your lips look weird. It's very lightweight, very silicone feeling. They smell delicious. This, I literally, okay. This was probably the, uh, the customer service and the shipping I was most impressed with. I ordered this, it was sent the next day and it was in my house two days later. Like I got this like three days from ordering it. I will definitely be trying some other things from them. Definitely trying some of their lipsticks and their brow stuff. They have some brow things as well that I'm curious about once I go through my brow things that I have. Yeah, the color of it here, I'll just show the color of it on the back of my hand. So there's that. It's like a bricky coral tone and it's it shears out pretty easily. So like if I rub it in, 
it shears out quite nicely. If you're into those type of lip glosses, definitely check out Mented Cosmetics. And yeah, I'm super stoked to try some other things from them. Yeah, I think that's everything. So yeah, that is the finished look. I'm super into it. Uh, <laughs> these are everything I wanted to share with you guys. Definitely leave me suggestions for other brands that you think I should try in the future or other products from these brands. Um, I'm definitely super keen on liners, brow stuff, lip gloss type things, like highlighters, contour, blush things. I definitely encourage you all to look into these brands, try them out if you have the finances. Obviously look into things that are happening locally because that's probably where your resources are best utilized right now. I will leave links to things in the description down below for you guys to check out uh, that have like mass lists of like localized things, localized uh, nonprofits and petitions and funds and stuff. Definitely check out these brands. Uh, I recommend them highly. I mean, y'all haven't heard me shut up about <laughs> JD Glow this last year. Holy shit. So yeah, links to all of these products and these brands will be in the description down below, as well as many resources that you should look into. Thanks for watching everyone. Thanks so much to my patrons as always. I appreciate you so, 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 so much. Um, today's song of the day is 3030 by Deltron, 3030. Um, that song came up on my like Spotify radio when I was listening to Run the Jewels and I was like, shit, I haven't heard this song in forever. My roommate, my old roommate used to have this record and he would listen to it all the time, but it's a very good song. Highly recommend it. Yeah, uh, my next video, at least in the next, either my next video or the video after will be an anti-haul. Getting back to my regular schedule has been a little bit weird because I went back to work this week. So kind of readjusting my life and readjusting my sleep schedule has been a little bit of a learning curve, you know, because I'm just like, oh, sleeping from, from 4 a.m. to noon. That's normal. Uh, so thanks for being patient with my erratic upload schedule and enjoying my random streams. So <laughs> we'll keep doing random streams. Yeah. So an anti-haul is coming. It's just taken more research and more not scripting, but like an outline. It's taken an outline because there's there's a lot I need to talk about in it. Like a lot I need to talk about. I've been filming for over an hour, so I need to stop because I drank some coffee at 11 o'clock and now I'm awake. So what time is it? 2.22, that's normal. So yeah, thanks so much for watching everyone. Have a good rest of your day and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.